What's going on guys? I've got an awesome retapping video for you today. This was a Fender Squire Tele pine body with a butterscotch coloring, opaque color. What I did is I sanded off the finish, put a eighth inch maple top on here, glued on the fabric, then rerouted it, added some binding, and put another clear coat on it. Pretty cool project, took a little bit longer than I thought. I had to let the epoxy dry and then I had to let the finish dry. But all in all, this color scheme and this look came out awesome. It's that sort of butterscotch blonde, I think, with the gold top, gold and green fabric with then the black binding. This is an outstanding color scheme and was pretty happy with the way this turned out. So we'll go on video right now and show you how it's done. First up, we're going to fill that humbucker hole because we're going to convert it to a single coil. Was unsure how thick the piece of wood I would be using would be. So we wanted to fill that hole and have a little bit of meat for that screw to go into later. So we got some two-part epoxy. We'll mix this together, dump it in that hole, let it dry for about eight days, and then we'll route a channel hole here that I actually didn't do properly because I didn't find it later. So I route this here and then I ended up not using it because I couldn't find it uh, through the epoxy and where I placed the pickup. So we routed this. Still worked for the bridge but we had to drill a hole for the neck. So we'll get that cleaned up. And here we're starting to play with the thickness of the top and how much I need to sand off to leave that neck pocket at 5 8 So we're sort of just double checking, drawing some lines and trying to get it as original as it should be with the retop. I don't want to get him a guitar that has a little bit different of a height for the neck and then I've got a problem on my hands. So using a caliper to measure the thickness of the top with a guesstimate on how thick the epoxy will be once it's all done. We'll then take this over to the drum sander and take off that top. I think moving forward what I'll do is Get some really aggressive grit sandpaper, sand that off first, and then take it over to the drum sander to flatten it out. Here, after three passes, I ruined that um, sanding belt. And these belts are about 15 bucks a pop, and that was just a little bit too expensive for me. So that's the first pass. Push it through for the second pass. We're then going to figure out how the top's going to sit. Got two holes drilled, make sure those are deep enough. Clean off the top and the back, make sure there's no sawdust left. Line this up, apply some tight bond wood glue, spread it out. Plop it in, screw it down. And then take this over to my wine press clamp and clamp it in. Got a little felt pad that I put down so that it doesn't dent the top. And then we'll come back and start cutting the green and gold top to fit where I'm gonna glue this on. So I got an X-Acto knife and just sizing this up. Use some tape to cover that hole. 
I don't want this to drip through where I've already routed. I don't want to reroute everything. So this tape is going to make sure that epoxy doesn't drip through as I'm doing it. We'll then get some tight bond wood glue again and apply it to the one piece top. I got this one piece top from Kimball Hardwoods. He's got a whole bunch of this stuff. This was a real easy way for me to get a perfectly matched top on this body. I thought about how many different ways could I do this and this seemed like the best route. Place the top on, make sure I don't get any wrinkles, start smoothing it out. And I could feel on my hand I was picking up a little bit of glue as I was doing this. So just make sure it's smooth. Turn the body a couple times to make sure you don't got any wrinkles and leave it. So then we're going to build a little bit of a ledge on this so that the epoxy doesn't run off. I had used tape previously and that is a epic failure. So I'm using some three quarter corner uh, molding I guess it's called from Lowe's. This was just cheap sort of particle board molding. Cut up, build a little bit of a ledge clamp it down and then once all the epoxy is dry we'll pull this off. So I did the pour live in video and we'll let that roll here. For some reason my top part didn't film so you get the sort of face version of this without the top. We're going to put the epoxy on this top. I'm trying to do this at lunch. I've got my tabletop epoxy part A, part B. I dumped a first and then B. I've got a little bit more than eight ounces of liquid. I built a ledge around this body. I wanted to make sure that this was perfect. And I also taped up the sides, made sure that I got no leakage. This little corner piece uh, was really helpful. I didn't want to put the tape on. I know as I take the torch over it, it doesn't look right. So we're glued on, we're all set. Let's mix up the epoxy and go trick with mixing the epoxy is not to create too many bubbles. So I just stir slowly. I'll get those questions. When do you know it's mixed enough? And I don't, I just keep mixing for at least five minutes. We'll let this sit for about one minute. Some of the air bubbles will come up and pop on their own. Giving it a minute just sort of helps. We'll pour this off to the side like this. Try and get it so that it evens itself out. We'll then begin to spread this out. We'll just do this slowly. This takes a little bit of time to do right. This epoxy is self-leavening, 
self-leveling, but you gotta make sure it's all over the body. I don't know, dude. No, not right now. Come back with the flame. trick is to let this sit for a couple minutes, let any sort of gaps, bubbles, whatever, sort of reform and then hit it a couple minutes after you initially apply it. So we let that epoxy dry for about two weeks. We took this over to the bandsaw and then began to cut this off. So we'll just go slow. And I'm also trying to keep the top from scratching against the bandsaw. So I'm using that ledge and cutting it off slowly. I'm trying not to dig too far in to the top as well. So just take it slow and cut off the rest of that top. Put some blue tape on the bottom because I'm going to be using this on my pin router outside and I don't want to scratch up the bottom too much. And then here I have a bottom bearing bit on my pin router and I can go ahead and get this top perfectly flush with the body. I tested on the top there just to sort of see how this looks and I've got enough room and it leaves it just flush and we'll rub this, run this across the rest of the body. We'll then take this back downstairs to the drill press and punch through where the string are gonna go so I wanted to make sure that I've got the strings coming down properly and we just take this to the drill press and pop that hole through where the bridge is gonna go so at least I've got a general idea of where everything is gonna sit I then take a template stick it to the top and start cutting out where the rest of the holes are. So for the single coil top, I still have to reroute that, but I've got a hole for the bridge and for the control plate. So we'll just cut those out with a large bit, and then we'll take this back upstairs and route it the same way as I did the side with that bottom bearing bit and my top router and my overarm router. So we'll bring this back upstairs and just route out where the control plate is going to go. What's cool about this is the fabric doesn't rip out, it's coated in epoxy, so it just shears out, no mess. Really kind of a neat process I've got here now. We'll then stick a template on the top for where that single coil bridge pickup's going to go. 
So I'll route this out. Then we'll re-drill that hole for the wires for the single coil. I couldn't find it for some reason. And then we're going to put binding on this. So instead of spraying like last time, I'm going to put black binding and then the black, yellow, and gold really match up nicely. So I've got my Stumac binding bit. I've got some Stumac binding. And we'll just go at it. Lower it a couple times. I wish I would have scored the finish so I didn't get as much chip out. Because the one thing I didn't like was there's a little bit of chip out. I should have scored the finish. And then we're going to use some super glue to glue this on. This is glue boost. And we've got the binding. And we're just going to stick this on. Use the Stumac brown tape, which is by far the best tape out there. This stuff is awesome for binding. Didn't film the whole process, but just did this over a couple days. Tape it down, let it sit for 24 hours, and then come back and do the rest of the sides. I didn't film all of that. I didn't go with a heavier material. I didn't want it to eat into the finish or on the top or on the back. The super glue I could control in that channel pretty well. And I've got my Stumac scraper. I've been using those thicker scrapers. They work really well. So we're just going to go ahead and scrape the top. A couple spots I had some super glue thick. And we'll just go ahead and scrape the top, flip it over, and do the sides. Sanded the sides as well. I don't want to take off too much of the finish, so a little sanding, a little scraping, a little bit to get everything right. And then I didn't film the finishing because my GoPro was acting up and I didn't want to get my GoPro full of finish, so I used 2K, sprayed that, and then let that sit for 10 days. I only put two coats on, didn't need a whole lot of finish on this with the epoxy and everything else. But we'll wet sand this, dry sand this with 320, 800, 1500. This is the dry sand. And then this is the wet sand after the second coat. At this point you can see the body looks outstanding. probably spent about 20 minutes wet sanding the top and the sides. I'm really intrigued how this looked at this point. I was really happy with it. A couple spots I had to go over a couple times. We'll then go ahead and buff it. And already you can see how awesome that looks. We'll buff the top and the sides, and I even re-wet sanded the back so that it was of a high grid as well. And then I've got two buffs. One is thicker, one is thinner to get into the curves. And we'll go back to live and video here. So that was my retopping video, completed body. Like I said, it took a little bit longer than I thought. One thing I didn't like was that I sh should have scored the finish before I routed for the binding. I got a couple of chip outs here that I'm not 100% happy with, but that's a lessons learned and for what it is, I think I've got a perfected process now 
I'm gonna add a retapping option on my website. I figure out the costs for this and I have a couple different fabric options. So if you have a custom fabric you wanna put on a guitar, I can do that. All in all, I think 250 seems reasonable for the amount of time and effort I put into this. But this was really a fun project. Glad I didn't have to use the paint to feather it. I love the full look of the body a little bit more than the one I've got. But thanks for watching guys. We will see you in the next video.